Welcome to Module 1, which will provide an introduction to the topics covered in this course. Each year in the UK, people are killed, injured and suffer work-related illnesses whilst carrying out their jobs. The Health and Safety Executive, HSE website, reports that in 2018-19, 147 people were killed at work, including 30 people in the construction industry. Across all industries, 44 self-employed people were killed, 20,000 employees were seriously injured, and there were over 203,000 absences lasting more than seven days. Additionally, around 1.3 million people suffered from work-related illnesses. So, health and safety is a significant concern. The government, employers and workers all have an essential role to play in reducing deaths and accidents and preventing ill health at work. Decisions on health and safety carry ethical and moral considerations, such as getting the right balance between safety, financial implications and quality. While widely debated, these considerations essentially boil down to the fact that it's unacceptable to put people at risk. The primary legislation governing health and safety at work in the United Kingdom is the Health and Safety at Work Act, 1974, HSW Act. Under the law, an employer must take reasonably practicable steps to protect the health, safety and welfare of their employees and other people who might be affected by their business. More detailed legal duties are set out in supporting regulations such as the management of health and safety at work regulations, control of substances hazardous to health, COSH regulations, the manual handling operations regulations, PUA, provision and use of working equipment regulations, and LOLA, lifting operations and lifting equipment regulations. These laws are enforced either by health and safety inspectors or the local health authority, who hold a wide range of powers including the right to enter premises, examine premises and equipment, take measurements, samples and photographs, require an area or machine to be left undisturbed, seize, render harmless or destroy dangerous items, obtain information, record statements and request any person on the premises to give them any help necessary. They can also provide employers with a wide range of valuable advice. Health and safety inspectors can issue two types of notice. An improvement notice, which is issued when a person is not complying with health and safety legislation. Or a prohibition notice, which prevents further use of equipment, premises, processes or activities, either permanently or temporarily. Please click Next to continue. Health and safety laws apply to a wide range of workplaces including factories, shops, schools, hospitals, hotels, places of entertainment and outdoor work activities, such as farming, fishing, mining and, in the case of this course, the construction industry. Workers must have or be in the process of obtaining the Skills, Knowledge, Training and Experience, SKTE, to do the work they are asked to do. If they don't have this, then their employer must provide suitable training and supervision. In assessing whether workers have the SKTE required, employers should not rely on industry certification cards alone. Instead, they should look to nationally recognised qualifications, such as MVQs and SVQs, that will provide proof that a new employee has the SKTE to carry out the relevant tasks. Employees are also responsible for their health and safety and that of others who may be affected by their actions at work. To achieve this, they must cooperate with employees and co-workers to ensure everyone meets their legal requirements. Your organisation should have a written statement or general policy on health and safety at work if it employs more than four people. This document should set out the organisation's commitment to managing health and safety effectively and how it intends to achieve these objectives. Please click Next to continue. Failure to meet the requirements of health and safety regulations 
carries three main consequences. These can include legal action, reduced staff morale, and financial penalties. Legal action against the company for non-compliance could include enforcement notices, prosecution, and civil actions for compensation. Accidents caused by failure to adhere to the regulations could reduce workers' morale and make them suspicious and less cooperative with future health and safety initiatives. There can be severe financial repercussions if health and safety is poor. For example, injured workers needing time off can lead to lost production or the costs of extra overtime. There may be negative publicity, which will affect the company's image and deter job applicants. Insurance premiums could rise, and there could be substantial legal costs. The site induction process is for people who are new to working on the site and is an important baseline for any health and safety programme. The process should explain the following points. Emergency procedures, site rules and regulations, site risks and hazards, welfare areas, the location of health and safety notice boards, the location of fire assembly points, the location of fire extinguishers, and the names of the site first aiders. After the induction, or whilst you are working on a site, you might be required to attend site briefings or toolbox talks. A toolbox talk is an informal meeting that focuses on a specific topic related to a job. They should detail hazards relating to the job, ensure you understand safe work practices, remind you of the location of essential items such as first aid points and first aid books, issue any PPE, issue any work permits, method statements or risk assessments. Make sure you're familiar with any site access and transport issues. Provide specific knowledge for a particular task, plus any other relevant general and health and safety information. Please click Next to continue.